Hey everybody, Adam Savage in my cave, and here we are at nearly the final step in the process of my Iron Man armor. I know, I'm still talking to you from the future, but at the beginning of this video, he is chrome-plated, well, chrome-painted and sealed, and ready for the final step, which is the washes that tell the story of his age and his construction. And I often do my base coats and my washes in different kinds of paint. In this case, it was spectacularly successful. My base coat of Malto and All Clad is lacquer-based. The washes over that were all acrylic based uh, and I went over them with the washes and then pulled those washes back with rubbing alcohol, water, rags, and elbow grease. And I have never found a technique that gave me so much finite control over where the dirt went on the model. The final pass was of course all the rust passes. I invite you to look particularly at the left knee, which is one of my finer paint jobs I've ever achieved. Oh. I could keep talking, but you should probably just watch me go through this paint job because it's really cool. Here we go. We've reached a milestone. I am done. Uh, I'm done painting. I'm done painting all of the masked stuff, all of my chipped paint on the forearms, uh, the stencils, stencils on the back. <clears throat> All the pieces are sitting over there on the table saw and around the shop. What I need to do, and you see the legs right there. <sighs> yeah. Um, what I need to do is both put this guy on a stand and pull out my airbrush and start doing all of the black line work. But <clears throat> I'm starting, I'm, I got such great results with the um, with the acrylic wash yesterday. I think that's where I'm gonna start on the legs. Oh, there are lots and lots and lots of little pieces to this thing. All right. Time to start putting this thing together, sort of see how to attack it. Uh, shoulders. I gotta do the shoulders next because I gotta mount them into this. They're all mon they're a part of the same piece. So I gotta do that first. All right. The thing I love about this black, uh, this acrylic paint job on the on the chrome silver is that when I add um, some of these extra modifier colors, like this ochre yellow um, and the brown, they end up giving me this really awesome extra uh, color variance. Um, because the, hey, wow, all right, you're dead. There we go, some burnt sienna. So what they do is they just lend this warm tone right here to the, the metal, which is really nice. I think I've done all the mechanical problem solving I can on this thing. We're most of the way there in terms of the lights. Yep, all of it. All of it! Okay, I'm gonna need to get gloves on for this action because this is gonna get messy. Let's get a little more burnt um, sienna in there. And all right. Let's we'll see if I've got something that can still stick to the ribs of this piece. Uh, gloves. This is a left shoulder. Let's paint it. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Yep. Yep, this is definitely the first pass. That's great. It's nice and thin. It gives me a lot of room to move. Yep. 
Great. Ooh, nice. I like that. Okay. Great. Left shoulder. Good pass. Yeah, okay. I'm satisfied with that, and I think I can do the right. Okay, good. That tells me I got plenty of paint and plenty of, yeah, detailing to do. Awesome. Okay, so now it's time to regroup and get ready for the full-on painting, the final pass, passes. It's gonna be like seven or eight different paint treatments all working in concert with each other, but let me get these shoulders attached to this dealy bob. Oh, that looks good on the table there, doesn't it? This, that's looking nice. Um, sometimes if you're not sure what kind of progress you're making, sometimes, using your phone camera to take a picture of what you're working on is the best way to see how you're doing. Um, specifically because your paint job exists both for people in real life and for the memory. <laughs> and you should be looking at your paint job on the camera regularly just to see how it lands. Come on. Once I get these in, I'm gonna clean the shop up just a little bit. It's kind of get my head back into the new space. And did I do that? Let's see here. I added in this um, neck structure and I'm actually quite grateful the way I did it because I managed to stay out of the way of my shoulders, which is good. Okay. Um, yeah, let's get you up and on this guy. Yeah. Okay, uh, I am, I've made a decision. <laughs> I've made a decision uh, about how I'm doing, I've been talking about how I'm doing multiple passes. This is a big pass that I'm about to do on this. I'm about to, I'm about to kind of make him super rusty, greasy. Uh, and then once that dries, I'm gonna show you my main painting technique. I know, my hair looks crazy today. I'm so sorry about it. Here we go. Um, so I'm just going to come up here and kind of just like, I'm just going to really cover this thing. And tomorrow, when this dries, actually a few minutes for you, you'll get to see how I plan to kind of treat this. And it should actually be pretty cool. Now, what I'm, what I'm applying here is my acrylic mix. It's my mix of black ochre, uh, red oxide. Uh, and so it's a, it's a dark wash that I'm putting over on, in acrylic, um, but it is, um, it's not a black because I've added those other colors so I get some more variance. I feel like the legs are actually in pretty good shape, but I am gonna give them a bit of the same wash. And as you can see, it's a dirty, rusty wash. Yep. Yeah, we'll, uh... oh, 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 oh. Okay, so it's starting to come apart a little bit. That's the wash I'm putting on him today. See how greasy he looks? Wait till you see what I'm able to do with this tomorrow. Yeah, I know it's only been a couple minutes for you, but it's been all night for me. Uh, last night before I left the shop, I slathered this thing in latex paint, specifically black paint with a bunch of burnt sienna and yellow ochre in it. And that's what gives me this dark, but warm, rusty undertone, oily. It's ideal. I'm really, really happy with it. 
It's now time to take the next steps of the painting. And <clears throat> for much of the rest of the painting, I'm actually gonna be pulling parts of this costume apart because it's hard to paint this when it's all together. I needed to get it up all at once in order to kind of see where the broad strokes were. Uh, but now that I feel like I've got them, I'm gonna start taking it apart. But not before I show you my favorite aspect about painting in lacquers for a base coat and going over that with latex for a wash. And that is this. I have a spritz bottle full of isopropyl alcohol and I have a paper towel. And here's the thing, the isopropyl alcohol will remove the latex, but not the lacquer paint underneath. So watch what happens. You can watch here, let's see here. I'm just gonna come up a little high. Yeah, there you go, that's a little better. I'm gonna work on this area here. As you can see, it's like, there's some swirls here. It's not very realistic, it doesn't quite work, it doesn't quite scan. So I'm going to go to work on it with the isopropyl alcohol and the paper towels, and you'll see what kind of result we can get from that. I'll start here on the shoulder. Right? Right away. Mm. And the thing, oh, 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 oh. And the thing is, is that the difficulty with weathering is that it's easy to overdo both the uh, application and the removal. And what this latex technique does is it's sort of like using the airbrush tool in Photoshop on a low flow setting. It gives you a lot of room to adjust the finish. So here we go, watch this as I go ahead and hit this chest piece here. I'm getting rid of the swirls and yeah. And I'm trying to leave some dirt here into the corners. And I'm trying not to be super uniform about how I remove it. And I'm going, I'm actually working, I'm making sure to work one panel at a time on this, specifically so that I don't end up with a paint job that looks too self-similar. Oh, right, I definitely wanna pull all the uh, paint off of the weld lines, because that's what ends up looking really cool when you, when you pull that off, hold on. And then, right, right, look at that. This, this is, this is beautiful dirt. Gorgeous dirt, luxuriously lovely dirt. And I can go in and I can just keep on doing this and sort of taking parts down. I want the weather, the lettering to be a little more visible. So I'm just gonna keep on going. Yeah. See what I'm talking about? This. This is working out really, really well. I'm very, very happy about it. So I'm just gonna keep on going here and then as uh, eventually I'm gonna start pulling pieces off and putting them on the workbench. Yeah, here we go. And again, if I pull off too much, I can just do this again. I can reapply and hit it again. Also, this is not the last weathering pass I'm gonna make. I am also gonna hit this with some other oily colors and other things. It's the more the better on that front. Oh, you know what? I think I'm gonna pull the shoulders out as well. Um, it's important when you're doing this not to let the rubbing alcohol sit too long. It can potentially start to eat away at the underlying paint job. You want to be able just to like spray it on and immediately use it to start to remove the latex. That's pretty key. You don't want to start eating up the paint job underneath. But what's really great is that this ends up sort of pushing paint into the little tiny corners at a very like high detail look. Ooh.
Also, once your paper towel gets loaded up with stuff, you're gonna to wanna to toss it because it'll just start pushing paint around, in my experience. So freaking pretty. And this is where, when you really start to pull it and you get some chromey kicks showing up amongst the grime, that's when the whole thing really starts to cohere for me. And then I'm just going through looking for anything that catches my eye that looks a little bit weird. That's kind of most of it. I see like here on the Stark Industries, a little bit splotchy there, so I'm just gonna take it all back. I also feel like a lot of the, um, yeah, it's actually a little too dirty here in the middle. This silver that's supposed to be exposed paint from underneath doesn't quite work. So I'm gonna get out some of the Molto and uh, work on that a little bit. So you see, see over here, See this, how, how much that just doesn't quite look right? Here, come on in. All right, so see how this is just like, you could just see the brush strokes of such a thing. So, fold my paper towel. I've got like five or six layers here. I'm gonna hit this here and just start pulling it up. I'm gonna have to refill with I saw in a second, but I think I got enough to finish this operation. Yeah, now it feels much more to me like a piece of metal that's been abused than a piece of plastic that has been painted. And I'm gonna get some of this, this detailing here and make it a little more realistic. And because that's on actual aluminum, I'm gonna be a lot rougher with that because I can kind of pull that way back. Yeah, that's great. That's, that's really nice. All right, that's the first pass with the chest. No, oh, my pretties. No, oh, my precious. Say hello to my little friend. Yeah, my Iron Man Mark I is coming along really, really nicely. I am very, very pleased. Uh, I've got a terrific metallic, very believable metallic finish with a believable amount of dirt on it. I, I'm really pleased with how it overall lays out, but it needs a few final touches to, to tune it up as it were. Uh, one, it's gonna need a pass of some black airbrushing to just highlight some of the lines and kind of pull out some of the details. Maybe it's, um, maybe you can't see it, but like the cod piece seems a little bit too self-similar to the legs. So I'd go in and probably add a little shading here. I'd maybe add some shading behind here to kick this. I may darken that. I may darken the edge of a couple of these panels to pop them. Just little things with, with a dark airbrush line to just like draw your eye to some different places. Next pass would be um, some clear blue. I want to I want to put in some uh, transparent blue, as if uh, it's heat blued, um, into some really specific and small locations. Uh, I think some edges of weld lines here and there. I'm going to be very judici judicious about that. And then the last thing is some rust. And I know it kind of looks like I was doing rust when I was doing the dark acrylic before, but that's just like grease and dirt. The rust is very specifically like a red and an orange and a yellow oxide and mixing those and some streaks and some drips and stuff like that. I'm just gonna add those around and populate to make parts of this look older than other parts. Specifically on the real one, this whole area is very rusty. Uh, and now that I've got the chrome up to a nice sort of poppy shine, I think rust should look really nice on there. Uh, it's already way shinier than the one in the film, and I, that's actually, I'm, I'm now into my own, my own zone here. I'm following some of their basic painting techniques, but I, 
I think I've gone with a much shinier uh, looking Mark One, and it's just because I like it that way. Yeah. All right. Let's get um, let's get our stuff going. I'm gonna gather some paints and just start to make some passes. I'm trying something different. I'm trying some of this uh, indelible China ink in the airbrush. I'm kind of curious about the finish that it gives me. I don't know how it's going to lay down. I don't know how it's going to work. I'm going to try it. Uh, right. Here we go. Let's start off on the back side. Why not? Nice, that's allowing me to actually pop out some more of the well detail. I dig the sink. I really like the way it does its thing. That's nice. I like pulling it off and then I like putting it on and then taking it back off. It's great. Oh, let's get this guy down here. I really like how this ink lays down. It's really nice. Great, great, much better. I'm get a little bit more in here. Darker volume, yeah. Here comes some of the subtlest thing I'm gonna do on this costume. And it's literally like, just to give a gesture. Um, and that is um, a transparent blue. I'm using model color, uh, transparent acrylic. Um, I'm using acrylic so that I can pull it back off if I screw this up really badly. Um, yeah, so I'm literally just, I just wanna add a little, like, a, a hint of blue to the right shoulder here. Just as if it got a little warm, like maybe over here. Yeah, just that. And I don't even know if you can see that, but I can, and I can see that it gives me this tiny little click, just there. Just, maybe, maybe just there, yep. And again, it's just not, it's not uniform. It's sort of, sort of all over the place. Just, in little spots. God, it's super subtle, but it's literally all that's required. Just a, this is just like the tiniest hints, a little sheen. Again, these are like, this is, Letting your eye kind of tell the story it's going to tell. But, oh man, does it really give a kind of awesome perspective. The real trick is you just don't want to ever let it get too too, too, too bold, right? Like, as soon as you're like, is that blue? It's too much. It's 
just like these little subtle zones in which as the light kicks off, it gives you this little sheen. And I think, I think I might be done here. Um, the biggest impact is of course from the front. So I'll get that going. All right, to make my rust, I'm gonna make a little bit of a palette here with some yellow ochre. Is that what this is? Yeah, yellow ochre. Some burnt sienna. That is what this is, right? Yep. Also gonna use some cadmium orange. This is, I wonder how this will do. That might be too bright. There's some real yellow. I think that's probably what I want. Uh, I'm gonna try this deep yellow too. This It's not bad. It's just trying to get this right, like red oxide color. Oh, that's not so bad. Right? Right? See that? See that? That's what I'm talking about. Russ gathers in all sorts of interesting spots and it's gonna, yeah, let's try that. Then we uh, will remove a little bit. And now we're left with a little bit of um, a bump in the color. You see what I mean? Just how much that does. Let's just hit that and then beat it back again. Right? This is where it starts to get really excited because boy, does it start to sing here for me in person. And that's, that is just so rewarding. Okay, I, I feel like I've got what I like over here. I'm just gonna, you know, even if you put it on and totally ended up taking it off, you're still adding a little bit of warmth. You really wanna make sure you're not being too even. Oh. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Mm-hmm. No, oh, yeah, yeah, there we go. Drop it there. Oh yeah. Let's try right here. Ah, oh, look at how pretty. Let's get a little bit of rust on the side here. See how that just warms it up? That's the thing that you're looking for. Just even the warming is enough to like, oh, that is a piece of metal that has been abused. And around the welds, it makes sense for there to be a little bit of oxidation because you get oxidation when you have a lot of heat sometimes. So I'm just gonna do along the welds here, just a few little patches.
But now as I start to go through, I'm just sort of looking for things that catch my eye. Like, ooh, I like how that looks. Is there anything around there that doesn't, that looks actually like it doesn't have enough detail? Yeah, uh, okay, that's good. Oh, that's better. Yeah, good. Happy with that, happy with that. I can always darken that later. Yeah, good. Oh yeah, let's get something this. Sometimes, you know, just taking the stuff and just like hitting it somewhere, you know? Now I've got a like slightly brighter color of yellow here. And yeah, the, so now I'm gonna come in with this, just a slightly different color of rust and kind of like just add some accents because again, nothing's ever a single color. All right, let's get down to this knee here because this is all supposed to be quite rusty. Yeah, I think that um, looks pretty nice. I think that looks like the right kind of rust. And obviously any of this I need to take down, I certainly can. I mean, I can, you know, kill the value a little bit should I need to, but it's now just like, Look, it's easy to get super overwhelmed with a paint job like this because there's so many parts to it. But again, if you just keep on like pecking away, just like, oh, where does it look like you could use some stuff? Oh, there. Yeah, that's pretty good. Let's try there. Ooh, that's actually also nice. Yeah, let's do it down there. And then later on, when you come back and check it, you might have screwed something up or you might not be totally happy with something. You can totally adjust it. Ooh, ooh. Throwing some red ochre oxide into the into the corners in here, um, specifically just because like from anything more than like a foot away, it's gonna kick as like rusty underside and that's gonna be great. That does a lot of work for me. Just keep on adding the warmth. At a certain point, it's just gonna feel like you're not doing anything until, you, until you've got it. Once you've got it, you'll see it, right? Like once, once you're close, it's gonna start to become obvious. And that's, that is the most rewarding part. All right, let's see here. Maybe I wanna do a little bit more. And just that, putting some on and taking off, just a little bit of warmth. Same thing here. Just putting some on, taking some off. Just a little bit of warmth here. Yeah, just, just the leading edge have a, yeah. Oh, so many little parts and pieces. Oh, whoops. I might've gone too far. Oh, that's great, actually. I'm kind of happy with that. Uh,
Every time I see, uh, where am I? Every time I find a transition or like a spot between two spots that doesn't quite work, it's got to get either lighter or darker or get some detailing and it helps turn this thing into a succession of parts, right? Where each one looks like it had a narrative with its neighbor. That's the real goal here. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I'm just continuing to spin this thing and kind of like note where it goes and how I feel about it. And This will require like one more final paint pass, I think. But. <laughs> so now this is the, this is a really interesting stage of painting for me. This is the stage at which I just keep on coming in and looking at it. And just, what you're doing, in the final, in the final, final passes of a paint job, you're asking yourself, does this thing tell the whole story or are there parts of this story that are weird? So in just the same way as like, let's say you're watching a Christopher Nolan movie and everyone's being really intelligent and serious and all this stuff is, going, is happening. And at one point, the two main characters during the conversation walk into a liquor store. And in that liquor store, there's like a clown and it has nothing to do with the plot, and it's not ever explained, and it's just this weird spot where, like, the two hitmen go into a, you know, 7-Eleven, and, like, burr, 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 there's, like, a honking clown behind the counter. You would watch that movie, and you'd be like, that spot was weird. That clown, it didn't quite fit with the rest. That's what you're doing with every part of this. You're looking around, and you're like, yeah, looks pretty good. What what you're asking yourself, like among the here's I'll tell you actually, sorry, rather than just say you are asking and making these big broad statements, for me, here's what I'm doing. I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, can I see what it is? I turn around and I look at it. Yes. Can I before I did the final rust spots, this cod piece kept on looking like it was part of the legs. They kept on looking too monolithic, too, too much like one same part. So I darkened with just a little bit of China ink, darkened here and here to kind of make it stand out a little more. Um, and again, I'm just keep on looking for little places where it doesn't look a little too uniform here. You know, and again, on camera, little spots of rust like this don't necessarily show up, but boy, do they warm it up to your eye. So I'm just, you know, just slowly noticing where things could use just a little bit more attention. Yeah. And I mean, I'm not even sure you can see this on camera, but in person, it's just, just that little spot. And I mean, at this point, I could totally call it. I don't have to keep on going, but I want to, I like, I want it. Training and just following the path laid before you can get anyone to take a project to like 90%. I'm totally serious. You don't require any special skills or talent or insight to take a project most of the time to like 90%. That last 10% is where all of the magic happens. I'm at like 95% here. And I could spend as much time on the last 5% as I have on the previous 95%. I won't, but like that's kind of how that split can work sometimes. I'm just going through, does everything actually I feel like I could use a little, I'm just, part of me thinks there's a little rust could do right there. So let me just try it. Yeah, nice. It's just like a little rust. A little rusty. And that's him. Oh, you know, there's also going to be a little fuller dirt on this. One second. I'm going to hit it with a pounce bag. 
Got it. Yep, see down here? Down here now I feel like I can see. This could use a little bit of help. Great. It's a nice spot of color. It's a big it's brash. It's just what I want it. Let's get some. Oh yeah. Nice, nice. Absolutely badass. I think I have one, one more pass to do down there on the left knee. Maybe not. Maybe I'm almost there. <clears throat> Damn, it's looking really fine. It's not worth obsessing over the right color of rust. It really isn't. Rust is like so many different colors. It can be bright yellow. You can even add in sometimes even a little white, just the tiniest dots. But for the most part, it's red, orange, yellow. The ochres are good, the umbers. But rust is a lot more forgiving than you think it might be. Um, Again, all of this has been done so that I can adjust the paint once it goes up. Um, so the base coat is all lacquers and lacquer clear coats. And then over that is all acrylic. So all the transparent stuff I did, all the, everything else has been water soluble so that I can pull it back off and put it back on and I can just constantly adjust. But I feel like I'm done. I, aside from just like a couple little things, the, the head mount, that's the next, that's the, I think the last bit. Um, I mean, I might put it on before the head mount. It's just it's a real pretty thing. Also, frankly, the head mount may end up being an entirely separate video. I think I might be done. That, I'm so happy with the Stark Industries, with the paint job here, with the chipping paint and all that, it just really feels like the right story. I love the hot kick on the welds. I like the belt, how much darker it is. Uh, the chipping paint, I'm really pleased with how that came out. The rust and the dirt on the shoes looks more authentic than it did before. Um, just all around. That's a thing. That's a lovely, lovely thing. I'm not gonna say thank you for joining me for this one day build because I think I gotta put it on. But thank you for joining me for this one day build. Maybe the most surprising fact about this build is that I've owned this suit now for 11 years and I have never put the totality of it on my body.
I've worn the chest piece. I've worn the chest with the arms. I've worn the chest with the arms and the head. I've worn the legs with the shoes and the calves and the feet. I've worn the legs with the chest, but not with the arms and the helmet. I have never worn one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I've never worn all 12 chunks of this costume at once. So of course it's what I'm about to do. Here we go. I may end up needing some assistance, uh, but uh, that'll be later on in the equation. Oh, mm -mm -mm. don't yank anything out. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Got this. Oh. This belt is actually one of my favorite parts of this costume. This is not original to it. Um, but when you see it all together, it's kind of, I'm entertained by how I created an organically mechanic, sorry, a mechanical shape that I could still wear on my body comfortably. Left foot, yep. Yeah. My wife, who's helped me put on the odd costume here and there, says that I get this sort of, Feverish, hum feverish humming, like ooh, energy when I'm putting on a costume. Mia culpa. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. The um, the shoes in this suit are ski boots. I bought used ski boots in my shoe size. Um, and what's great about ski boots for costumes exactly like this is that they totally have enough structure to be the shoes for these legs without me having to actually tie them or bind them, which is significant because I like my costumes to all be like one person affairs, right? Like, you know, that I can put it on myself. I don't like having a lot of, having to have a ton of help for it. Okay. Just the sound is great. All right, cod piece. Good, good sloppy tolerances. Yeah. So far, so good, okay. Here comes the jacket. This is actually one of my old welding jackets and it caught on fire at one point. Not while I was wearing it, but I feel like that's, ooh. Something keeps on snapping, but I think it's just a tolerance issue. Okay, so, so we have an authentically weathered leather jacket. This is, Everything seems to be holding up. I don't see any loose ends. Uh, gloves after I put on this. Yes. Okay. So let's, um, there we go. <clears throat> oh, uh, ah. Okay, it's happening. Ah, oh, this is why you put the gloves on first, because I can't actually touch my hands to each other. Come on, ah. come on. Ah, I hope Tony Stark doesn't have to pick up his car keys or anything. Hold on, let's see if I can, ah, there we go, yeah. One and two, these are actually old shop gloves of mine. I think that makes them even better. Okay, um, now there is a, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. Norm, I'm gonna need your help. And that light should go on, great. Go ahead and um, 
Yep. Terrific. And then the other one. Ah. Uh, the helmet's gonna have to wait for the big, big reveal, but. Dude. We're still booting up. Go make it, go delay them. <laughs> oh, this, um, for without a doubt, the most like cumbersome costume I've yet built, this is not that bad to wear. Yeah, I'm not sweating. I mean, it is a little chilly in the shop, but yeah, you want to get some shots of me just walking around? Oh, dude, this is so freaking awesome. <laughs> oh. oh, my gosh. It feels great. It feels like armor. And this, whoa. Um, in the film, Tony's able to reach across his body and flip switches. Not going to happen here. No sound design necessary. It sounds incredible. All right, yeah, let's try putting that on me. Um, you don't have to open it up. You could actually just place it down on my head and like hold it there and let me. Okay, so push it down from the top, from the very top. Yeah, that's, yeah, okay, and then stop. Ah, nope, you gotta take it off. The problem is that, um, Headpiece isn't sculpted for my head. I'm casting, this is a whole separate one day build. There'll be another video about this. I'm actually casting my head to put a fiberglass insert in there that fits me exactly so it can be just dropped on my head. But. <sighs> my turn. <sighs> we are considering shooting a cinematic reveal of this costume. But for this video, this will suffice. Thank you guys so much for joining me for this one day build. I am Iron Man. <laughs> you are awesome. Stay safe and I'll see you guys next time. watching that video. If there's a video equivalent of the Clean Plate Club, you're a member. Uh, if you want to support us, one of the best ways you can do it is going to our merch store and purchasing one of our beautiful new posters. This is my hand-drawn sketch of uh, my two toolboxes that I used when I was an active model maker at Industrial Light and Magic in the late 90s and the early aughts. There's also on the far left side of the poster a list of all of the tools I had in these toolboxes and I use them daily for almost a decade. Again, you can get your own version of this printed on a beautiful cardstock by following the links below.